This is a short video to cover some segments that might be missed during some testing of when you're testing uh, EDI transactions such as the 835 or the 837 or even some other transactions as well like eligibility. Uh, the reason why I'm making this video is that a lot of times folks uh, will start focusing on really the wrong areas to test. Maybe they'll spend too much time on an envelope and not really hit uh, higher impact areas like you know your provider IDs and demographics and subscriber IDs and demographics and uh, things like CPT procedure codes and diagnosis codes. But when you get past those and you think you've done a, a great job, pause for a second and ask yourself, have you taken care of some of the repeating segments? And that's what we're going to go, go over here. So if you're doing any sort of testings for 837s, COBs, 837s, 835s, or others, uh, that's what we'll go over. The first one I have up here is the 835, the 2100 loop. Uh, if you look at the guide itself, this loop actually has the number 5 next to it in the implementation guide. You know, I didn't say companion guide, I said IG or implementation guide. That's where you find your rules. And um, so I'll give you some examples. So if you're looking at your 835, you could actually see five refs show up just like this. Ref IL, Ref CE, Ref EA, Ref G1, Ref 1W. So if you're building some test cases, you should put one in there that says, you know, I am submitting an 835 uh, where the 2100 loop has five ref segments in a row to cover other claim related identifications or IDs. OK, let me uh, go over another example real quick here, um, such as the 837, the claim adjustment reason codes um, on uh, these particular segments you'll see a SV1, SV2, or SV3 line, for example. And then um, you'll start seeing looping happen happening around uh, your 2430 loop if you have a COB payer. So let's look at an example here. There's an LX1. This says SV1. That means it's a professional transaction. Uh, Ref 6R, that's simply you know a line item trace number. That's standard. But when you hit the SVD segment, you know that you have at least two payers. This is a COB or an encounter claim. And in this example, you can see that it's only one service line. This service line itself might look something like this. HC colon uh, 90847 uh, colon E1. You know, it might have like maybe some kind of a dollar amount. And then maybe units, something like that, you know, something like this, you know, it, it'll look something like that, for example, okay? And uh, same way with the REF6R, you know, it could be just like a number of some kind, right? And then you'll see this SVD segment show up. And the, the, these are the adjustments that where you have reasons why you're not paying uh, the full amount that's on the charge line in the SV1 line. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with how this works, SV1 is going to have the amount charged. SVDO2 is the amount paid. And the cash segments has six adjustments or the ability to have six adjustments per line. So, you know, the amount charged must equal uh, the amount paid plus the adjustments. That's pretty simple. But to stay with our analogy here, you see that I have repeated SVD lines. This is like in a scenario where you actually have a primary, secondary, and tertiary payer, and the SVD segments start to loop. And inside of the SVD, you can see that the cast segment itself is starting to repeat. This cast segment can repeat five times. So you could actually have, like, um, like I've shown you two here, you could have this many, five under one SVD. And this loop itself here could repeat 15 times. It's probably not going to do that because most people don't have any more than one or two payers. So, uh, but you could repeat a few times in real life, in a real world scenario. You, you are going to run into tertiary payers, you know, in real life scenarios. 
Some payers have rules around that. Maybe they don't actually process all of those. So you need to check with, um, you know, what those rules are with each payer. So that's the example there of where you have repetition around a cash segment and around an SVD segment in an A37, okay? Another common area that we see here is the A37 repetitions around the HI segment. Um, I do want to point something out because a lot of folks are not as familiar with this. When you have uh, an institutional claim, you can have 24 um, other diagnosis codes in an 837 HI segment. But in, that's, that is if you have a repeating HI segment. But if you have a professional, you only have 23. And that's because if it's a professional, it looks like this. It'll say HI, uh, ABK, colon, and I'll then have the diagnosis code. And then it'll turn into ABF, colon, and then there'll be another one and so forth like that. Okay. And it goes on, you know, until you repeat, you know, a total of 12 elements. But the first one in a professional is ABK. But in, a prof but in an institutional claim, they actually have ABK on one line like this. And then they'll start another line uh, for the other diagnosis codes. That's why when you start repeating with institutional, uh, if you have two HI segments, you'll have 24 ABF or other diagnosis codes uh, in, in an institutional if you're using two HI segments, but with a professional, you only have 23. I'm kind of going through this quickly. If you're not familiar with what uh, these qualifiers are, and I don't blame you because there are a lot of them, especially for institutional uh, providers, you just have to look them up. But, you know, ABK is for your principal diagnosis and ABF is for others. I'm just showing you that this HI segment can repeat, so when you build your test cases, you should have re repetitions, but also know that if you repeat in an institutional and you're testing for other diagnosis codes, you'll get the full 24, that's 12 per segment, because each HI segment has uh, 12 of those elements in there, and if you repeat uh, that segment twice, then you have 24, but with a professional, you only have 23, because the first element is a principal diagnosis code. Um, that's kind of wordy, and I apologize for any confusion there. I don't feel like I've done the best way to describe that, but I think you get the idea. The next area that I want to point out that folks miss a lot is actually the use of repetition separators. Probably gets missed a lot because you just don't see them. You, you, they don't occur in an A37, so you, you might be unfamiliar with them. But in a 270, when you do an eligibility request, this element, this is actually an element, can be repeated just like this. Now, if you look in your ISA segment, you know, there's a repetition separator in there. A lot of folks will use what we call a carrot. That's this one right here. Um, and so you can see that. This, is, this right here is actually considered one element field. But... When you have a repetition uh, scenario, that element can be repeated several times. But this is an element one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's actually considered just like one element. It's kind of a little bit different than the composites because the composites, for example, they might, some composites will actually have a date like century, century, year, year, month, month, day, date, like that. So here in this example, you can see that this composite actually might have like three separate pieces of information in it, you know. So um, in this scenario, this is all one element, okay? But with a composite, it's separated into three different areas. But notice that these all have different characteristics. This is a date, this is an actual diagnosis code, and this is a qualifier. Three totally different animals. You know, they're not the same type of information. One's not even data itself at all. It's just a qualifier. But when you run into rep, uh, repetition separators, they all have the same, they're the same thing. You know, so these are all like different types of coverages that they're asking about. 
So I don't know what all those are, 14, 7. It could be medical, dental, you know, vision, you know, whatever those numbers mean. But they're all the same thing, coverage types. So um, I think that this uh, video is probably a little more, a little bit more confusing, uh, especially if you're new to this. But that's also a reason why I wanted to make this video to shine some light on some elements that are repeated uh, and maybe they're forgotten and it, then you go live and you get a real world scenario and then something bad happens. So I hope that this has helped out some. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below or you can or you can stop by remorebay.com and uh, leave us a, a question or inquiry there. We do have all kinds of software applications that we make. We're great at data mining. We also edit uh, you know, we have, you know, access to translators and you know, we have our own claim adjudication system, just a candy store of EDI tools. So if you need some help with something, you know, if you need a quote uh, on um, maybe just some simple data mining that you want to do or, you know, any sort of SME work that you need help with, ask us for a quote on uh, something that you need help with. You can also find me at edi.dallas.zoho.com. So I hope this helps out. And thanks for watching my video.